This is California's richest oil field, producing more than 75% of the state's crude oil. Nearby, a major shell oil refinery is on the verge of closing. Critics say it's part of the oil industry's ongoing effort to manipulate gas supplies and prices. Uh, they are pulling many of the same schemes as Enron. An oil company insider and critics shed light on what they say is causing our record high gas prices. Shell has lied to our community, to our government. They have lied and led people to believe that there's an inadequate supply of uh, crude oil to run that refinery. He and another worker who talked to us off camera say managers told workers the company's goal is clear. He said as long as the prices of gasoline were above $2 a gallon, that they could ship more gasoline in from out of the country and make more of a profit. Shell maintains the refinery loses money. But this memo sent to employees just five months ago says in part, the Bakersfield refinery was the most reliable U.S. Shell refinery in 2003. This is the California electricity crisis all over again. We've got a handful of energy companies bent on making a huge profit, and what they're doing is shutting down their plants, shutting down their refineries to make the supply really tight and drive up the price of gasoline. Critics say oil companies profit more with the refinery closed, and you'll pay for it at the pumps. There is no doubt whatsoever that closing Bakersfield will make a lot of money for the oil companies, Shell and the others who do business here. But it's going to come out of our pocket. Shell says it's not about manipulating markets. A company spokesman says the oil fields in Kern County are drying up. The decision to close the refinery is based on the, the decline of supply, if you will, the crude oil that we rely on is in decline, and they have in decline. So that is why we're closing the refinery. But state geologists studied the oil reserves here in Kern County and found huge supplies of crude in the existing fields. In fact, their report showed more than 72% of the state's total oil reserve was right here near the Shell Bakersfield refinery. These uh, oil company executives can hear ka-ching, ka-ching in their bank accounts the minute you hear news that another refinery is closing. We've gone from 37 refineries in California to 13. This would make it 12 if Bakersfield closed it. Consumer groups say basing insurance rates on where you live over how you drive is unfair, especially to good drivers who live in low-income communities. All we want is our insurance rates to be based on how we drive, not where we live. There is no reason that the people that live in these houses should pay a different rate if they're a good driver than the people that live across the street. The insurance industry calls it zip code profiling. For example, on this side of the street, it's South LA. On the other side, it's Gardena. And if the same driver moved right down the street, he or she could cut their premium almost in half just based on the zip code. And it's happened to Anthony Paris. If you live on this side, because just 20 fixed different, you pay like 25% less. Does that make sense? No. Mark mentioned California a moment ago. Here's a guy who's a reformer in California, Doug Heller. He runs the Foundation for Taxpayer and Consumer Rights. Told Los Angeles Times, what we have learned unequivocally is that caps on damages do not reduce premiums for doctors. If President Bush, he says, really cares about lowering premiums for docs, he needs to take on the insurance industry, and he's not proposed to do that. Why hasn't the president taken on the insurance industry? I know in order to make sure we got good docs practicing medicine, to make sure health care is affordable, we need to stop these junk lawsuits. Blaming lawsuits for rising health care costs is an issue that resonates with doctors and business groups, but the problem, many critics say, is it's not true. When it comes to saving money for doctors, caps do not work. Consumer advocate Doug Heller says many states with caps still see huge increases in malpractice insurance because the insurance companies keep the money the caps save. They don't lower what doctors pay, and they certainly don't save the healthcare system a dime.
first of all, tell me your view on, on the merger itself. Well, our position on the merger all along was that it's a bad deal for consumers because the cost of the merger is going to be transferred onto patients. Uh, right. the, bill, the bill for the merger would be about $4 billion in financing charges. The top executives of WellPoint, which owns Blue Cross, and then Anthem, the out-of-state company, the top executives have planned to reward themselves between two to six hundred million dollars in bonuses as part of the deal. Just making a deal. Just making a deal. The government has deputized the banking industry to spy on American consumers. What we see is the possibility that banks in, their, in doing their policing duty for the government are gonna be looking at who we are, finding out more information than they ought to. It's a very profitable place for them because they get to sell information about us. You just wonder, are you giving the wrong people too much authority? We have got to clamp down on these banks who are just trading our private financial information like it's a commodity. Well, Citigroup says predicting customer information, protecting customer information, rather, is one of its top priorities. But the Foundation for Taxpayer and Consumer Rights has a somewhat different view. That group today tried a unique way of protesting a piece of legislation now before the Senate. The legislation would preempt strict state privacy laws with a single federal law. Despite their best efforts to write the social security number of Citigroup's CEO, <laughs> there it is, <laughs> above the Manhattan skyline, Mother Nature chose to offer a little privacy to Charles Prince. I also got the numbers of uh, Attorney General John Ashcroft and CIA Director George Tenet, and there is a number of some sort being formed in the sky high above Manhattan. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger is running into some fierce opposition tonight as he prepares to go back to the ballot box. He's drawing the wrath of people blasting his big dollar donations from contributors in and outside of California. Well, Ken, they call it Air Arnold, an airplane complete with a protest banner. Air Arnold flew over Arnold Schwarzenegger's Southern California home this weekend, and now protesters say they plan to make Air Arnold's a fixture at future fundraising events. The banner in tow reads, don't be big business's bully. Minutes later, Arnold Schwarzenegger sidestepped protesters before he met with potential campaign donors inside. Governor Schwarzenegger has violated his promises to the uh, public by taking big money from special interest groups whose agendas don't align with the needs of the people. In the 19 months since he took office, Arnold Schwarzenegger has raised a staggering $40 million. But for those so-called pro-business measures, the actor-turned-politician is shooting for another $50 million. Some argue, in Arnold Schwarzenegger's world, special interests are simply those who disagree with him. We don't need to call a November 05 election, and because the governor wants to, it's going to cost up to $70 million. You know, obviously, from day one of that phony energy crisis, we knew that the whole thing was caused by deregulation. In fact, we had an initiative on the ballot in 1998 to try to stop deregulation yeah. because we knew that it was just going to be a license to steal. Mm -hmm. and in fact, that's what happened. It was interesting. If you remember, when the, when the uh, lights started to go out at first and the prices went through the roof, uh, the Bush administration and some state officials here in California were saying, oh, this is because we don't have enough power plants. Yeah. But it turned out that it had nothing to do with power plants. Okay. It's just a bunch of people trying to make a lot of money. And they walked away with seventy billion dollars yeah and and i will put my right hand over my heart and i'll do all this and and he was saying this because i was out there covering you here in santa monica when this was all going on the foundation for taxpayer and consumer rights says nextel and singular have gone too far Singular, the group says, is failing to provide good service and charging unhappy customers early termination fees. And the consumer organization says Nextel has conducted illegal practices, billing customers for charges they didn't accrue, and refusing to make itemized statements available. Lawsuits have been filed against both companies on behalf of millions of angry Californians. There are bogus fees, overcharges, for which we're being nickeled and dimed out of millions of dollars every year. What are corporations doing? 
Well, they're putting their commercial gain over the interests of individuals in society. And if you look 25 years ago, it wasn't always the case. There was, there was a different view in corporate America. Uh, there was a stakeholder view where corporations valued community, nation, labor. And even the corporations that didn't got beat up by the corporations that did. And during the last two decades, we've really seen a change where corporations have exerted not just their economic power by getting bigger and stronger, but their cultural power.